Hey guys, it's Chris at Highline Guitars and it's time for a Luthier's Quick Tip. If you'd like to support my guitar building YouTube channel, visit eGuitarPlans.com and buy a plan. A link is in the description below. Now on with the video. In this episode of Luthier Quick Tips, I'm going to continue with my discussion on how I design or shape the tone of a guitar pickup as I'm making the pickup. And to further this discussion, I want to talk about magnets, the magnets that I use in the pickups. Now, typically when I choose a magnet, I have to look at two factors. The first is the composition of the magnet, and the second is the magnet strength. And for today's video, I'm going to focus on the first factor, which is the composition of the magnet or what it's made out of. Because as you will see in this video, the composition of the magnet can directly affect the tone that we're going to get from the pickup that I'm making. And then in the next episode, I'll switch over and talk about the magnet strength and how that can be measured and tweaked to fine tune or dial in the tone that we're after. So let me bring you a little bit closer and I'm going to demonstrate some things for you that I think you'll find pretty interesting. The most common types of magnets that we use in guitar pickups come from either the Alnico family or the ceramic family. Now there are some other magnets out there that people like to experiment with, but those are the main ones that we use. And they're available either as bar magnets, which we use in humbuckers and P90s, or slugs that are commonly found in Strat and Telecaster style single coil pickups. Now it's important to understand, the process for designing the tone or shaping the tone of a pickup is going to differ depending on the type of pickup that you are going to be making. If you're going to be making a single coil where you have to have the slugs present when you make the bobbin before you can wind it, you have to decide on what magnet you're going to use at the very beginning before you do anything else. So you have to decide whether you're going to, you know, which type of Alnico magnet you're going to use and then you would make the bobbin, wind the coil, and when you wind the coil, you would do so to complement the magnet that you chose. However, with a humbucker or a P90, which uses a bar magnet, you can choose the magnet later on after you've already wound the coil. So unlike the single coil where you have to choose the magnet first and then wind to complement it, you would actually wind the the humbucker or the P90 bobbin first and then you would choose a magnet that's going to complement the coil windings that you just completed. So I hope that makes sense. But typically your Alnico and your ceramic magnets when you're shopping for them you'll notice that they are followed by a number and in the case of Alnico, it can be an Alnico 2 or an Alnico 3 or Alnico 4, all the way up to Alnico 9. Ceramic, it's the same thing. And what those numbers refer to is the ratio of ingredients that make up the bar or the slug. And in the case of Alnico magnets, well, actually, with, with Alnico and ceramic, the one thing they have in common is iron. But with Alnico magnets, that iron is annealed or alloyed with aluminum, nickel, and cobalt. And then your ceramic magnet contains strontium carbonate. And the, uh, depending on the number is the ratio of those ingredients. So the ratio of aluminum, nickel, and cobalt in an Alnico 2 is going to be slightly different than the ratio in Alnico 3, Alnico 4, and so on. And it's that presence of iron which can affect the tone of the pickup. At this stage, since we don't have the pickup installed in the guitar and can't hear what it sounds like, we have to rely on some electrical measurements to determine what that tone is likely going to sound like. And the way I do that is I use inductance. So what I've done here to demonstrate how the composition affects the tone is I've got a humbucker pickup without a magnet installed into it and it's hooked up to an LCR meter. So when I switch on this LCR meter we get a reading of 4.1213 4.13 Henry's 
Now, as I stated in a previous episode, with inductance, as that number increases, the pickup starts to sound darker or warmer. As that number drops and gets lower, the tone of the pickup tends to be brighter. So for this particular pickup, 4.12 Henry's is going to make for a slightly warmer, darker pickup, a typical almost PAF style humbucker pickup. Now with humbuckers, you can uh, achieve inductance measurements that go much higher than four. You can go all the way up to six and beyond that. Single coil pickups, on the other hand, are going to show a much lower inductance reading, usually between two and three, and that tells us that the single coils are going to sound brighter. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to demonstrate how the composition of different kinds of magnets can, can affect the inductance reading. So here we have 4.12 as our base reading. And if I insert an Alnico 3 or Alnico 2 magnet, we see that the inductance is now jumped up from that 4.12 to 4.53. It's substantially higher. The inclusion of an Alnico 2 magnet is going to make this pickup sound a little bit darker. It's going to clip some of the treble and mid-range frequencies because, as I said before, the higher the number, the darker the pickup will sound. Now watch what happens when I remove the Alnico 2 and I jump to an Alnico 5 magnet. The inductance reading has now dropped from the 4.53 that we got with the Alnico 2 down to 4.37. So that number, because it's lower, indicates that the Alnico 5 is going to restore some of those clipped treble and mid-range frequencies, and the pickup is going to sound ever so slightly brighter than the pickup would have sounded if it had an Alnico 2 magnet in it. Now, one of the uh, rules of thumb that I follow when selecting magnets is that as the number increases, the pickup is going to tend to sound brighter. And to prove that, I'll take a, a, an Alnico 8, and I'll slide that in, and the inductance drops even more. It's going to be even brighter sounding than the Alnico 5 magnet. So we can see how the composition affects the inductance. And of course, with ceramic, we're going to get the brightest possible. So it drops all the way down to 4.09. So we're at the lowest of all the different magnets. So the takeaway here is as you go up in number, the pickup will get brighter. As you go down in number, the pickup will get darker. And that's specifically related to the composition of the magnet, the iron content. Now, a question that's probably going to come up is, what effect, if any, does the strength of the magnet or its magnetic field have on the inductance level? And the simple answer to that is none, zip, zero, zilch. And to demonstrate that, once again, I have my humbucker pickup with the magnet removed. And I have here a steel ruler, which has no magnetic property whatsoever. So in a, when I insert this into the pickup, we can see that it changes the inductance level, just the presence of the steel ruler. And that's because of the iron content in this ruler. It has nothing to do with magnetic properties. In fact, I can take a, a fully charged Alnico 5 magnet, and when I insert that, we can see that the inductance reading is 4.37. If I take that magnet out and demagnetize it or degauss it to almost zero and insert it back in, I'm going to get the exact same inductance reading. So what we're doing here is we're, we're seeing how the composition of the magnet, the alloys that these magnets are made out of, and how they can affect the tone based on the numbers. 
Obviously, we don't know what this pickup is going to sound like for sure until it's installed into a guitar. But what we can do is we can get an idea of what it's going to sound like based on the inductance readings that we're getting. And by changing to different magnets, we can affect that reading. And as I've said before, the higher that inductance number, the darker the pickup will sound. The lower the inductance number, the brighter it will sound. So if you decide you want this pickup to sound brighter than it would with an Alnico 2 magnet, you could put in an Alnico 5, and that's going to restore some of the treble and mid-range frequencies into the signal that are clipped when an Alnico 2 magnet is used. Now, as I've demonstrated, the composition of the magnet can directly affect the inductance reading that we take for a pickup. And since inductance can tell us, to some extent, how the pickup is going to sound before we even install it into the guitar, we can use that to help shape or design the tone of the pickup. Now, of course, we're not taking into consideration the strength of the magnet just yet. That I'm going to explain in the next episode. The strength of the magnet will affect the tone. However, since it doesn't affect inductance, we have to use a different measurement to determine what the strength is, and from that we can tell how it's going to affect the tone of the pickup. And more importantly, we can actually adjust the strength of the magnet to further fine-tune and dial in that tone. So. Stay tuned for the next episode, and as always, if you have any comments or questions about this, I know it's fairly complicated, post it down in the comments section below and I'll try to answer them. And as always, if you enjoy videos on building guitars, making pickups for guitars, that kind of thing, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you don't already subscribe. And make sure you hit the bell icon, that way you'll be notified each time I post up a new video, which is usually twice a week. And until the next episode, as always, take care, stay safe, keep testing negative, and I'll see you soon. <laughs>